Welcome back to the Papa Meat Channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on and sit on down because today we're talking about the Lord. Or at least servants of the Lord. Man, I know that's all of us, but today we're going to be talking about some of the most despicable people on planet Earth, in my opinion, which are televangelists. Televangelists, you know, I, I feel like the reach has never been greater. Right now, I see pastors tweeting out the Lord's message. I see people doing streams on Twitch praising the Lord. TikTok lives, Instagram, Instagram reels, all kinds of stuff. It has never been an easier time to get the good word out. But televangelists are a different breed. Formed basically right at the beginning of television, it has been a big, big big moneymaker in the church regime for a long time. And today we're going to be talking about some of the most despicable members of that. We're not going to be bashing any of the Lord's words. We're just going to be bashing the people who abuse the system. Because if there's one thing that is probably the most disgusting thing that you can do with any kind of power via TV or social media is to manipulate people who are in dire needs for salvation and all they have to do is drain every penny from their pocket. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Wait! Ooh, I got something to tell you. You better listen up. You better listen good. The Lord has come down and he's told me something. He's told me something good. He's told me something special now. He's saying that uh, we officially have our gamer subs flavor. Raw meat. Ooh, baby. And it's the best. It's a nice watermelon cantaloupe surprise that'll make you say, oh, mama mia, praise the Lord. And right now, you can get it at gamersubs.com. Just head on over there, get yourself a little raw meat, and use promo code Pop a meat at checkout to get 10% off. Oh, baby. And you know what? As soon as you taste this, you'll be ordering them every goddamn month because they're that good. It comes in caffeinated, non caffeinated versions, keto friendly, low calorie, okay? No sugar, all right? Nothing but pure goodness. Mmm, watermelon cantaloupe goodness. Perfect for any summertime needs. Hey, if there's any tithing, Tithe to yourself, baby. Serve to yourself and get yourself some nice raw meat gamer subs. Support the channel, support gamer subs, and support yourself. Drink responsibly, drink tastefully. Gamer subs, raw meat. I love you. Did you know there are over 1,700 mega churches in the US alone? A mega church is defined as having a weekly average of 2,000 more people. And you know, you get into stuff too where it's, it, the churches, I mean, mega does not even scratch the surface to the size of some of these people's complexes. I mean, an unbelievable amount of people. Almost like every weekend you're going to see a pop star act. The stage is that big. There's that many people filling up stadiums, literal stadiums of attendees. It's pretty amazing. But with tax exempt stadiums, status, churches are big business, pulling in an estimated $74.5 billion a year, which is pretty fucked. I mean, I don't think people really fully appreciate the tax exempt status. You know, for a lot of smaller churches where it's a mom and pop organization and maybe it's in a small town, having tax exempt probably helps alleviate a lot of the things of maintaining and running the church and putting it back into the community somehow versus being a pop idol god amongst your own peers and having tax exempt status is fucking insane, especially whenever regular fast food workers, people who work regular nine to five jobs are paying taxes every paycheck. And then you have fucking Joel Olstein over there driving Ferraris and all kinds of shit, not having to pay the government one single dime. It's pretty fucked, which we'll get into that right now. Peter Popoff, what a great name. Peter Popoff, who's worth $10 million, claimed to be a clairvoyant, but received messages from an earpiece from his wife, which was proven by James Randy. She lives at 1627 10th Street. 1627 10th Street? Is that right? That's right. Wait, wait, wait. Clairvoyant is where you can speak to the dead, right? What was that one show where it was like the medium? Remember the guy? He'd be like, I'm hearing a Tim, Tim. And so I'd be like, that's my husband's name. He's like, you. It was basically him. That was him as well? Okay. Which he was great because he was almost like a shaman. And he would accurately announce home addresses and specific illnesses of audience members during his healing sermons. Called his skeptics tools of the devil. What's kind of funny about this is that I don't know the specifics of this, but I imagine that people who are showing up to the church, they probably filled out something of like, what's an ailment you have or who's a recently deceased person. And they would probably fill that out and put it in there. And then they would have like specific seating or something. She'd gotten her information from prayer cards filled out by the faithful before the show began. Probably to so where they could be like, oh, that's, that's your name. This is her, you know, they have like a little form. Cause it'd be easier now. You just Google up their name. Oh, did you just look up somebody's Facebook? Were you pretty depressed yesterday? I was. How did you know? Everyone's like, I follow that bitch. 
<laughs> that bitch is just a doom post. She's a black pillar. For real. Good lord. Sold Miracle Spring Water on TV. Which Peter Popoff's Miracle Spring Water is a scam that involves respondents sleeping in the water, praying over it, and sending it back to Popoff with a donation. It's a pretty good deal. Also, to send things back, that must be it. the shipping cost for that? Holy shit. In exchange, respondents are promised protection from disease and disability. Oh my god, that's so fucked up. As well as financial prosperity. The water is said to come from Russia Spring that protected those who drank it after the Chernobyl nuclear accident. I'm sure a lot of people drink a lot of water. Yeah, no, no, nothing bad happened to the Chernobyl people at all. Did you use the Miracle Spring? I used the Miracle Spring water twice, and you sent me this Miracle Spring water, and I followed the instructions. Two days later, I got it check for twenty five hundred dollars the following week i got a check for thirty thousand dollars two checks double portion blessing what does that mean what check i don't know who wrote you the check could you be more specific whose name was on the check she's like I, 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 you didn't prompt me that when I, you gave me the script whose name was on the check what if she's like your name your name's on the check he's like uh no i no, cut, 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 cut the broadcast. Cut the broadcast. His organization brings millions of dollars in a year and no financial data is available since 2005 as they've gained nonprofit status. Ah, the Lord is good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. One of Popov's schemes was that he was claiming to sneak Bibles into the Soviet Union. What am I reading? What are we even talking about here? He reported that these Bibles were being floated over via helium air balloons. <laughs> to facilitate this noble act, he requested large sums of money, both for the large amount of Bibles he was buying and for the transportation. Popov started getting huge sums for this effort. And when his skeptics asked him to prove the purchase of the books and balloons, he staged a burn burglary at his headquarters in 1985, which he later used on subsequent broadcast to tearfully ask for more money to pay for the damages and replace the Bibles. That is so fucking funny. What a weird thing. So you're, the scam that you're doing for people is that you're lying and say you're going to sneak Bibles into the Soviet Union using helium balloons. Why? This is why I feel so bad because you only see a lot of time is that people who watch this stuff or people who are like, ah, well, those people who follow that stuff are fucking dumb anyways. I'm like, these are like well-adjusted people who are almost a indoctrinated into a cult like they put so much of their own faith and their belief into this thing and i don't think that any of these people are truly stupid i mean don't get me wrong there's probably some fucking dunces there don't you know and there's probably a couple bad eggs but i just mean this is just sheer manipulation especially for something that's been going on so long it's fucking crazy man and also it's kind of one of those like weird what was that one the stanford prison experiment thing where it's like anybody with a shrivel amount of power will abuse it and then anybody who's like under that will abide by what they say and stuff just feels weird i can see people kind of being in this thing where they would never question anything that he says. And God, that's so funny. Tearfully asked for the money back. What a fucking pussy. Which the biggest and highest earning of these churches is Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Lakewood! Oh no, I Which is helmed by the ever controversial Joel Olstein. Joel Olstein's net worth is over $50 million. For a man who is serving the Lord and trying to bring people to salvation, I feel like you don't need $50 million. I'm gonna go on a big limb. Maybe if he had some kind of act that he did. I'm trying to think, like if he, if he juggled. If he did his sermons and he juggled, would that, I don't know. Even then, I'm not sure. He has one of those extremely big shit-eating grins too. It's just, it oozes with that just kind of like fake, almost like veneer mask. I, I, I hate it, but he has the prosperity theology, which believes that it is the will Will of God for the pious Christians to receive material gain. Kind of like that book, The Secret, I think, which is literally, if you think it, it'll, it'll come in, it, it'll come. Not that kind of come, but it'll come. He lives in a $10.5 million mansion and drives a $325,000 Ferrari. These are things that really, to any other person, you'd be like, well, hey, he's a rich guy, but to a pastor, it seems just a bit, Dare I say inappropriate to be driving a Ferrari as a pastor. It'd be so funny if a woman's just like, thank you, Joe, the service was so good. He's like, get off me, poor bitch, and just appeals out. He takes a salary of $200,000 a year from the church. I doubt it. I bet it's way more than that. Yeah, on, on paper, he tells the government, I take $200,000 a year. 
it's like the same thing with like presidents where it's like, oh, you have 300 or $400,000 a year salary for the rest of your life. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It's like Steve Jobs. I think he only gave himself a dollar each year. He gave himself a dollar, yeah, but it's worth billions in stocks and everything else. He claims that his money comes from his book sales. Less than 1% of the 89 million that was raised in 2017 went to any charities. The rest went into his extravagant lifestyle. And then during the COVID times, even, there was a thing called the CARES Act, which is basically, I think everybody got like a check or something. He uh, claimed a bunch of money and fucking lied about that too. Made a statement that he didn't claim any money. I didn't claim me. I didn't claim anything. I, hey, the Lord's got my back, right? But the administrative data shows that he indeed claimed $4.4 million. So there's a lot of celebrities that do that. Didn't Brett Favre do something like that too? Some kind of crazy shit. And then during Hurricane Harvey in 2017, he refused to offer assistance or housing in its mega church. He had this giant coliseum that he gives his sermons to every Sunday. People were like, hey, my house, like, we're gonna die. Can you let us in? And he's like, ah, there's too much water. He kept claiming that there was flood water surrounding the entire, the entire building. Well, he would have let people in, but there was flood of water everywhere. There is just a plethora of photos that it couldn't look more dry is the, unfor is the unfortunate thing. At least pick a lie that makes sense with video and photo proof is what I gotta say. Joel later said that they did open the doors and it always was opened. Had earlier stated that their church might open if all their shelters were full and eventually they did open in a minimal capacity. In August of the next year, Houston Mayor Turner declared a day of honor for the church and Olstein for their efforts. Wow, what a stand up guy. I'm pretty sure he only opened it also after there was like immense backlash. Pretty sure people were like, this guy's a fucking piece of shit, whatever. And I'll tell you too, I'm pretty sure my mom has some of this dude's books and stuff. Is it, do you think it's, it's actually kind of an interesting thought experiment. If, if the majority of his wealth came from book sales, does that justify his extravagant lifestyle when the entire thing is you're preaching the Lord's word? You know what I mean? Did he pay taxes on those book sales? No, I, I, there's no way he paid taxes on those book sales. I doubt it. Well, even if he did, I'm just saying that like, it's very hypocritical to be like, all you need is God. And then you uh, give nothing back to anybody. And this, this is to me too, where I'm like, if it's your money, you can do whatever you want with it. But whenever you're a holier than thou kind of guy, it just seems fucking crazy. Next up, we have Jesse Duplantis, which he has a nice net worth of 20 million dollars, what a pussy, wow, only 20 million? Why don't you start selling some fucking books, you old bitch? Pastor of Voice of the Covenant Church. Voice of the Covenant Church, that's a fucking creepy ass Voice of the Covenant Church. Claims the second coming of Christ has been delayed due to lack of donations to his congregation. And so what has hindered all these things is, because people are not doing in the financial realm, because we live in an economic world, what God's called them to do. Come on, dude. Jesus is trying to make his way here. Can't fucking afford gas, all right? If you guys would just donate more, he'd show up faster. God, what do you not know about that? He begged his congregation to donate money so he could buy a $54 million plane after already having owned three private jets. Well, dude, I mean, come on. Private jets are kind of small. Turbulence is bad because they're tiny. Sometimes you need a $54 million plane. Got to get places. I like to think that he just travels like 45 miles in his $54 million plane. Really taking a nice uh, page out of the book of all the other superstars who fly around the world and stuff. But he's just like, I just want to go down the road. The four jets of the apocalypse, dude. The four jets of the apocalypse? <laughs> People would just pay him more money than we could... <laughs> We get to where we need to go. And when criticized for his $54 million plane and his three private jets, he said, and I quote, I really believe that if Jesus was physically on earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. He'd be an airplane preaching the gospel all over the world. What a weird tone deaf thing. Jesus wouldn't be riding no donkey. He wouldn't be riding a donkey. He'd be in a Boeing. Hell, he'd be in a jet stream flying around preaching the word. It's always funny when people say flying around preaching the world as if it's just like, it's just that convenient to just get in a jet and just be like, we're gonna go here today. And then they land and he's just like, hello. I've come to spread the good word. His house is a mega mansion, and he had it classified as a rectory. What's a rectory? A house where a minister or priest lives, usually near the church. Okay, so no taxes are paid on it, because God forbid, you have to just give a little back. You know, taxes, taxes suck, right? No one likes paying taxes, but the whole thing is that you hope that it goes to something kind of good better roads, you know, it helps pay for all the public bullshit we have and everything. And all these greedy cocksuckers just don't want, they, they, like, no, no, 
know, I have my own gold bowl that you're supposed to put money in. I don't, I don't give you money. You know what I mean? Come on. Next up, we have Jan Crouch. 50 million. Oh, Joel Osteen, watch out, huh? Started the TBN, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, with her husband, Paul, and fellow religious grifter couple. What do you mean by grifter? Scammer. Scammer, okay. Why don't we just say scammer? Who the fuck says grifter? Like, am I in the Mad Max universe? Like, what, like, what are we talking about here? Fellow religious scammers couple. Sc and other religious scammers, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, those fucking idiots. She was known for going on TV and emotionally begging for donations. I do want to see this. I love this. Sounds like certain Twitch streamers. It does sound like a couple of Twitch streamers that I am not going to name, but I think we might know who they are. Last request. Said if you would just say on the air. Dude, why did Jan Crouch kind of got me acting up a little bit, huh? That bitch is like covered in like gold chains and stuff. She has the exact outfit Xerxes was wearing when Leonidas went up and he was like, can we not just fucking call it a day? We love you, Brenda. She will be watching because she watches 24 hours a day. God, what a fucking loser. Watches 24 hours a day? Dude, get a fucking hobby. Good God. Before the nightmares stopped, Jan, I had planned to commit side. I'm enclosing $10 to begin supporting TBN whenever I can. This is boring. <laughs> I love this top comment. My friends and I love to get drunk and watch Jan Crouch videos on YouTube. <laughs> Even pissing your money away on lotto tickets is a better investment than TBN and its resident drag queen. I tell you what, this is what's kind of crazy is I don't know if you've ever been to any acting classes or improv classes. The way that she's forcing these tears out is like watching people try to learn how to be a dramatic actor for the first time. Is she yawning? I don't know if she's yawning. It'd be funny if she was or she you could tell she's like putting the her tongue on the roof of her mouth, or whatever, and she's like mm. No, she's just like, I don't even. I wish somebody would just help, would just help her. Jan Crouch, hot as shit, oh my God. In March, 2012, Crouch was accused by her granddaughter, a former employee and chief finance director of the network of misappropriating network funds to spend on lavish lifestyle. Expenditures included expensive homes, private jets, massive custom wigs. I like how the massive custom wigs came after mansions, private jets, and her extremely eclectic and very large collection of big wigs. A lot of big custom wigs. She had numerous facelifts and breast augmentations all right, we'll do me. Come on. You're in front of the camera all day. I mean, I, I, and a hundred thousand dollar air conditioned mobile home solely for her dogs. <laughs> And I already know there's gonna be some fucking stupid ass internet people who are like, honestly, I do the same for my pups. I put that fucking dog in a fucking cage and I it down the river, dude. My puppers, my, my puppers, my doggos. Jan, you're not too bad after all. $100,000 air conditioned mobile home is so funny though. All right, pups, you go in there and you have fun. There's just shit and piss like everywhere in this nice mobile home. Also in 2012, another of Crouch's granddaughters sued TBN, alleging that she had been molested and to God. Damn. By a TBN employee at the age of 13. She alleged that Jan Crouch screamed at her and blamed her for the assault. And in 2017, a year after Crouch's death, a jury awarded the granddaughter $2 million in damages for past and future mental suffering. Did she get that mobile home though? Yeah, what happened to the mobile home? That'd be such a fucking spit in the face, dude. <laughs> One of her granddaughters comes forward and she's just like, my grandma was a fucking terrible person. She, you know, was so abusive. And they're like, oh, that's horrible. Well, we're going to give you the dog mobile home. And we hope that this helps with your mental anguish for the rest of your life. Even $2 million does not seem like nearly enough. This is 2016 money. 2017 money. Oh. Which, you know, Jan Crouch, she had a stroke and went to hell in 2016. What an unflattering picture of her. I'll tell you what, that wig is awesome though. She looks like the singer of White Snake or Cinderella. Just one of those 80s hair metal bands, like 1984. She's just like, you mind if I finger fuck you outside of a 7-Eleven? That's what it feels like to me. $2 million for, that's insulting. Especially if it's like my girl, I'd be like, no, give me fucking all of her money. All of it. I'm gonna dig up her body and spend all of her money and make her a giant ventriloquist, a bald ventriloquist puppet. The public gets just to play with. Be kind of good. Good joke? No? Okay. Creflo Dollar. He has a net worth of $27 million. He's a televangelist for a newly founded denomination, Christian World Changers Church. That's a bad name. CWCC. Actually, kind of sounds like an old radio thing. CWCC. Like Olstein, he preaches prosperity theology, which once again, the secret. You just gotta believe in God and it'll come to you. 
think that's how they escape criticism. It's like, well, I'm preaching, making a lot of money. Oh, well, yeah, it puts you in a perfect thing of, the entire thing about prosperity theology is that you'll be like, I've been doing this for a long time and nothing has come my way. Well, it's because you have doubt. You're, you're talking, but you're not really listening. Or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? That kind of thing, where it's just like, you, you, you want to think that you're believing, but really, you're not giving your full, your full faith, are you? And you're like, I guess not. Well, see, I'll try giving it your full faith and I'm sure it'll work out. I mean, look at me. Now you're going to see a bowl come by. You want to put about four or five bucks in there for me. There you go. There to go. Creflo Dollar owns two Rolls Royces, a private jet, and a very, ooh, luxury real estate. Mm. Ask congregation for a $65 million jet. What is the purpose of the jets? I was, I was thinking about if I had this amount of money, would I really want a private jet? You can't be among the plebs. Well, I'm sure. I'm, I imagine that, yeah, you don't want to be among the non-mogging plebs out there, but still, is it like, it has to be something where it's like a different level of like class, where they're like, ooh, you own a private jet. You know what I mean? Same with people that have like yachts. I bet they feel like God's angels or something because they could fly anywhere. Well, yeah, just be like, I don't have to ride with the poles. Claims naysayers to his Gulfstream G650 were the devil trying to discredit his service, but refuses to provide any transparency for his financials for the church. Refused to cooperate with the government probe in 2007 unless it was the IRS, but no charge was filed. What a funny picture. This thing of him smiling and then the next thing is in. In 2012, he attacked his 15-year-old daughter, choking and punching her. Creflo Dollar was arrested arrested on charges he punched and choked his teenage daughter. And as Dan Harris reports tonight, the pastor was back before his congregation preaching and pushing back. How do you not laugh when you read that? The absurdity of that sentence is fucking wild. I mean, look at that, dude. It literally looks like the Metallica concert in 1989 when it's like hordes of people, whatever. Look at them all standing up. They're just like, you did punch her. And you choked her out, didn't you, Creflo? I wanna hear what he says, actually. The truth is that a family conversation with our youngest daughter, got emotional. <laughs> got emotional? No shit, dude. This is, see, they gotta get these guys in the fucking ring for like WWE. This is like some real mic talk right here. But the only thing on her neck was a prior skin abrasion from eczema. Police say Dollar choked his 15-year-old daughter. Dude, ain't no way he's coming out that courthouse with that fucking, that Michael Sarah Juno mustard yellow with the Whoa. red brim. Dude's literally looking like a track athlete in the movie Juno. He's guilty. God, look at that mansion. So funny. Anything you want to say to your congregation? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> Anything you want to say to your congregation? Uh, show up on Sunday with smiles and money in the pocket. During this arrest or whatever, charges were dismissed after he took anger management classes. All right, I guess I'll go take the classes. <laughs> Claim that she earned it for being willful and disrespectful and fighting back against his punishments. And while also telling his congregation he never did it and that malicious witness testify against me. That's pretty good, dude. Nobody saw. You gonna believe her or me? Yeah, exactly. Nobody saw. You gonna believe my little bitch daughter or you gonna believe me? All right, now let's everybody open up our Bibles right now. I'm like, that feels fucking insane to me. Crypto Dollar isn't the only person to get into a little bit of legal hot water amongst all these beautiful televangelists. You know, we have tax fraud, sex scandals, drug, you name it. Ted Haggard, net worth of 200,000. He has a little ways to go. He's not as actually that's not that. No, he's kind of a salt of the earth guy. I like that. He's a pastor of the New Life Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Frequently preached against same sex marriage. Which I mean, I feel like they all you know what I mean? Well, I think he came out as having a sexual relationship. Oh, okay. So we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. This is the like craziest TED talk. <laughs> I see, like that stage just makes you think of a TED talk. I'm like, I think I know what you did last night. <laughs> Good God, the weird friends laugh track in the back. If you send me a thousand dollars, I won't tell your wife. <laughs> Okay. Ted Haggard, he frequently preached against same-sex marriage, you know, a, a lot of people do that. But in 2006, it came out that he had been having a sexual relationship with male prostitute Mike Jones and had been also using meth, which he had been purchasing from Jones for years. That had to have been an interesting, like, evolution one day, right? You know, you keep buying all this meth from me, but you never asked once to suck my cock. He's like, well, Mike Jones, could I suck your cock for, what, for some meth? <laughs> Do you think he used that as an excuse? Like, well, at first I was, you know, just buying meth from him, but... Only, only $200,000. I bet he probably, he probably fucking sucking some cock for some meth. Why not, dude? I bet you it was something where he gave him the meth baggie, and then he, like, actually touched his hand and was like, oh. Sorry, and then like emotions started to flur there, and then all of a sudden, you know what? He shows up to Mike Jones's fucking motel in the middle of the night. It's all pouring rain. He's like, can I buy some meth? And he's like, 
I'm all out. And then they start making out, start fucking each other. I probably can't put butt fuck. <laughs> that, was a bit, that, was, that was a bit much, but when jo <laughs> when Haggard denied it, Jones provided a voicemail where Haggard was requesting meth, Be became ungay and made up with his wife through a spiritual restoration process. And he went on Celebrity Wife Shop where he swapped wives with Gary Busey. What a weird, d d is there any record of that voicemail? Hey Mike, uh, this is Ted Haggard. I really need some, uh, I need some meth. I'm not gonna suck your cock this time. <laughs> and I'm not sucking your cock anymore, even though I really like it, and I, be I beat my dick off to it. I'm not, I can't do it anymore. All right, just let me know. Bye. Really, Jones? <laughs> Can you take a moment and sit by the vehicle and just talk to us for a minute? Well, we can't get into much. We're a little late for an appointment. Okay. But suspension of my senior pastor's role, I resigned from the NAE because both of those roles are based on trust. And right now my trust is, is questionable it's insane <laughs> my trust is qu questionable have you seen mike jones anywhere I, I really want to talk to him it's insane how even in this though that he's still in pastor mode the big smiles and everything it's fucking crazy and i know that nicole asked you deny, but i have to ask you again have you used meth no i have not okay the only time the smile drops is when he knows that he's just <laughs> she's like have you used meth as soon as he hears the word meth he's just like Them? No, I haven't used it. Do you have some? I are you, are you Mike? Mike, is that you? And what did you call him about? I called him to buy some meth, but I threw it away. <laughs> How good is that? I called him to buy some meth, but I threw it away. Is that not the same thing the fucking files say in To Catch a Predator? I just came here to talk. I came here because I was joking. She's gonna buy her clothes. We're going to the mall. <laughs> We're going to the mall. Me and Mike Jones are going to the mall. We're going to get our, ourselves outfits, suck each other's cock, and smoke meth. What's the big deal? And who were you buying the meth for? No, I was buying it for me, but I never used it. I love that smile came back, but I never used it. Have you ever used meth before? No, I have not. So... And I, I did not ever use it with him. That was that I, I I I heard the pain in his voice right there, dude. He's holding back some broke back mountain tears right there, dude. I'm saying, and I never used it with him. In your hands I place. Never. And his mind, he's just like screaming, "I miss you, Mike. I love you." And did you ever have sex with him? No, I did not. Oh, dude, come on. I feel like if someone was like, "Did you ever have sex with that guy?" I feel like a lot of guys would be like, "What? No, no, what?" He's like, "No, I didn't." You keep shaking your head yes. No, I didn't have sex with him. Not once. <laughs> I was tempted. I bought it, but I never used it. Who gets tempted by meth? Meth heads. Well, yeah, meth heads do. But I guess the whole thing is I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I really want to do drugs. Would the first thing that you would be tempted by is meth? No, I, I would say no. I would say maybe like weed or cocaine because in movie you, you see that in <laughs> What movie do they glorify meth? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, dude, you gotta try some meth. It's fucking great. Next up, we have Jim Baker. He co-hosted the show The PTL Club with his wife, Tammy Faye, from 1974 to 1987. Uh-oh, that's not a long run. In terms of uh, televangelist years, that is not a long stint, dude. 13 years? Uh-oh. He got arrested, went to prison, and now he's selling doomsday food buckets. Still to this day, you get out of prison, you start selling food buckets. That's, that's the natural progression. Creamy potato soup bulk bucket. The soup comes in six gallons of this. It weighs almost 50 pounds. You're gonna dream Jim Baker on TV, and you're saying, oh my God, why didn't I go on? Why didn't I order something? Oh my God. Why didn't I get that creamy potato soup bulk bucket at 50? It's $160 and 50 pounds of creamy potato soup. I'm gonna eat some more of this if you're not careful. Oh. 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 Mm. Mm. It, oh. Good. Oh my god. <clears throat> <laughs> Did you hear that? It sounds like he's dying. Him, ch him choking on thing. Oh, oh my god. It's so uh, it, good. Oh. You didn't have lunch, right? <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> Why would you? Why would you taste it if you know it's going to be that bad, dude? Oh, my God. 
When he started choking on his own soup, it reminded me of the Simpsons episode where Krusty does a commercial for his burgers. Uh, I almost swallowed some of the juice. 30 day fiesta bucket. Looks so gross. Oh my God. Look at these buckets of food, dude. It's obnoxious. We gotta do just a video on this guy's bucket, food bucket thing. You could have your whole living room with end tables and coffee tables made out of food buckets. Just do it. You could have your whole living room be in tape, like of your fucking buckets that you're hiding. Imagine someone walks up their house like, what are the, what are these draped over? Oh, those are just my doomsday, my doomsday Jim Baker <laughs> buckets of food. Power goes out and there's no trucks running and the EMP bomb or whatever the, uh, they're talking about for these last day events. Two gallon bucket, packs of coffee. Yes. You could trade them for whatsoever you want. That's it. You could probably get a new car. You could trade them. Yeah, bartering system. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> about the fucking bartering system here. $80 deluxe coffee and creamer bucket. I love the concept of buckets. How did he get to the bucket concept? I want to know. What are we going to do? We're going to sell food out of buckets. And we're going to tell people to barter them and make their home furniture out of them. It's going to be perfect. Wow. That, that's, I I, I'll, I could watch that all day. <laughs> which he has the survival, he has a survival sampler bucket, which contains 154 meals and will cost you $135. <laughs> a year for two tasty food offers proceed at $1,100 and piece of mine final countdown offer with 31,000 servings for $4,500. $4,500. The food is said to taste like paper mache. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Next up, we have, I would say, dare I say, the Titan. This is the god of gods. This is the king of kings. Of course, I am talking about Kenneth Copeland, who has a net worth between 300 and 700 million dollars. What? What? Really? He's the founder of Eagle Mountain International Church Incorporated. And he is, I mean, you have to have seen him. He's kind of a, he's a big, he's a psychopath. He's a crazy guy. No, no, I'm supposed to tell you. He does scam faith healing. You know, a couple people do that, but Kenneth does it better than anyone else. And he continued preaching, holding services, and demanding preachers keep congregations together during COVID, resulting in the spread of the disease. Which, you know what, dude? Some people don't give a shit about it. Kenneth Copeland didn't really give a fuck about it either. He claimed he killed off COVID with the wind of God. Which, I don't know if you've seen this clip, but it's pretty funny. COVID-19! COVID-19! Burn. I hollered at the top of my voice, in the name of Jesus, you get back up there where you belong. Boy, up it went. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I messed us up. Man. I love it, dude. Raised money to help Haiti to create an aviation relief assistance program, but ultimately spent the money in other ways. He really needed that money. It's now they're overthrown. Well, abused, <laughs> abused personage by living in many million dollar homes. Uh, Oh, I'm hitting my speed bumps here, dude. Whatever. He 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 has a bunch of fucking he has a bunch of mansions that he writes off for tax purposes. And there's the infamous video of him defending himself and his purchase of Tyler Perry's private jet. T Tyler Perry sold it to me for such a good price, I just couldn't help it. And uh, you know, he calls commercial airlines long tubes filled with demons. Here, play a little clip of it. You you can't manage that today. Right. The, this dope filled world. Right. And get in an air get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Which you know. In the end, televangelism is a scam. That's what it is. I'm sorry to tell you. I have so much hate in my heart for these people. It, it's unfucking believable There's so many people out there who want to do good, who so many people, especially people who follow religion, follow, have some kind of faith in something because they're just trying to look for something better at the end of their life. You go through life being fucking kicked down to the mud, roll around, you work jobs you fucking hate, you provide for your family that you love, and at the end of the day, sometimes people just want to feel like there is going to be something better, and these are leeches and parasites who prey off of those innocent, hardworking people and it's so sad you know i want to talk about this because i've had my own personal experiences with it with some of my family members my family living paycheck to paycheck and then seeing them give money to these people go to the stores and buy their books and do all these things and try to put your faith into very obscure places because at the end of the day all of these people just want answers i look at these crowds of people it's easy to be like what a bunch of fucking idiots but it's it's hard because i also see just a bunch of people who have been manipulated or people who have put their faith into just like something 
something so fucking evil. You know, I, it's my just my opinion or whatever, but all of this shit, man, is just, it reeks with absolute, it just reeks of being, of just evil. That's all I have. All I know is televangelism. What a fucking mess, dude. What a fucking mess. I like Ted Haggard the most, though. What I wouldn't have given to hear that voicemail that he sent Mike Jones, man, would have been a fucking, would have been awesome. If anything, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a nice, uh, to, to lead us out, I'm going to do a nice, what I think he said. Oh, Mike. I need some of that meth and I need some of that dick. I need back shots from you, Mike. Oh, my wife's coming. I gotta go. Mike, I love you. I love you, Mike. Mike, I love you. Okay. Hey.